Welcome to episode 24 of Vampire Survivors like game in Unity. In game persistent data progression, finishing the level. After in games you want to carry some data between scenes, to do this you need some kind of persistent data container. There is multiple ways how you can achieve this. Today we will use scriptable objects. This only going to work inside the game, while it runs and be persistent between sessions only in Unity editor. You will need to serialize data into a file for your build game. We will tackle this in episodes to come. So let's start by introducing a persistent amount of the coins collected through your gameplay. We already have golden coins pickup prefab, so we want to make it that our coins persist between levels. In the coins component we store the total amount of coins you have into the local variable, which gets reset every time you restart the level. Let's create a persistent storage for those coins. Create scriptable object called data container. We need create asset menu so we can create instances of this data container. Create variable for these coins. Now in the coin component, instead of storing coins value into local variable, we will be using the referenced data container. Create instance of the data container and reference it on the character. Now we need to make sources which will drop those coins, and it is actually pretty easy to do for us. We already have component responsible for drops. Open drop on destroy component. We want to make it possible that either crystal or coin will drop. So change the reference to item prefab to be list of objects which this character can drop on its death. So we want to spawn one of the referenced object which this enemy can drop. This means when enemy dead and roll to drop is true, he will choose one item out of the list of items and drop this item. Let's reference the crystal or gem, whatever, and coin. And let's test this. Good. As you can see our character can drop coins now, and the amount of coins dropped will be stored in the data container. Scriptable objects are persistent data storage inside the Unity. So if we start a game right now, it will preserve the amount of coins we have amassed. This episode is brought to you by generous support of people on Patreon and members on YouTube. If you want to join them, link to my Patreon in the description. And join button available right now on YouTube. If you join at $10 or more, you will get access to project files on Patreon. Good, now let's introduce a check if we have completed the level. On the world, create a new component called Level Completion.
our level completion is dependent on the time. So let's make serialized variable for when this level is considered complete. Because we need to know the amount of time which passed since we started this level, we need to cache the stage time component, which tracks the stage time. Now in the update we check the stage current time against the time to complete the stage. If stage time is more, it means player has won the level. In this case we need to pause the game and show the level completion panel. So first cache the up pause manager. So we will pause the game when level is complete. And we want to introduce a panel, which will be shown when level is complete. Good, so in the editor make, make the panel. You can copy the game over panel and reuse it for win panel. We cannot reference the level complete panel directly, because it is on different scene. So we need to use a component to find this panel reference. Create game win panel component on the panel. Then inside level completion use find object of type to find this component. And in the update get the game object reference from this level complete panel component and set it active. Good. We are doing this because using components is much more consistent between projects rather than using the name of the object. Because even smallest change to the name of the object will cause an error which is very hard to track down. In the editor set the time to complete level to be let's say 60 seconds. Which means at 1 minute time our level will be considered complete. Let's test this. We have a problem. Our game win panel can't be cached by using find object type uh, because it disabled at the beginning of the game. We can include inactive objects in the search by passing true as a parameter. And while we are at it, let's make sure that our button is set to exit to menu. For testing let's set finish of the level to be 30 seconds, so we don't sit there for that much time, you know. Good, we won. But if we try to launch level once again, it will be paused. Same will happen if I pause the game and uh, exit to the main menu and then restart the game. To fix this issue simply open pause manager and on the start call unpause. This is happening because time scales stay persistent between scenes.
Good. This is it for this episode. Special thank you to each May, this old Hajdu, and Ruby Long. With best regards, see you in the next episode.